Welcome back to ABNC Numismatics. Today we're going to talk about the person who links Albania and India. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to rewind and go all the way to 1600s Albania. We're talking about this guy. His name is Pieter Bogdani and he was a Catholic clergyman in the middle of a storm. In the 1600s, Albania was ruled by the Ottoman Empire and they suppressed anyone expressing nationalism. So naturally, the Turks weren't a big fan of Pieter Bogdani, who was this very, very patriotic Albanian who chose to write Catholic texts in Albanian language. So for most of his life, Pietro Bogdani was on the run. He was hiding in caves in various cities and he was arrested a couple of times by the Ottomans. To add fuel to the fire, he helped the Austrians beat the hell out of the Ottomans in the Austro-Ottoman War of the 1660s. Oh damn! You got yourself in a pickle! So with the help of the church, he flees to Italy where he writes his most important work, the Cuneus Profitarum. And this is important because it's the first substantial work that's written in Albanian. It's both prose and poetry. It borrows from the Old and New Testaments. And it talks about two things, the knowledge of God and the question of existence. And it looks at existence through the lenses of reason and the philosophical lenses of St. Augustine, Aristotle and Plato. So that's Pieter Bogdani for you. Wait, you thought Bogdani had something to do with India? Ha! But we do like to put international culture in perspective. Centuries after Bogdani, an Albanian Catholic would say, By blood, I am Albanian. By citizenship, an Indian. By faith, I am a Catholic nun. As to my calling, I belong to the world. As to my heart, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. She is featured on the currencies of Albania and India, and she is probably Albania's most famous export to India and the world. We invited Yuli Zuloftari to talk about what Mother Teresa means to Albanians. Uh, she was born in Albania. Uh, her name was Agnes Gonje Boyajio. She became an official nun in Ireland, and uh, she went to India in around 1948. There was some sort of like controversy. The Albanian government requested the Indian government to hand over so they could have a proper burial. And uh, that did not turn out to be okay. <laughs> However, we still uh, celebrated her. We gave a national holiday to her. We really appreciated what she did. So for the whole month or so, that we gave out stamps, gave her a proper uh, respect and burial she deserved. Some people are enraged that she's not in Albania, but uh, I speak for myself when I say she uh, she's a global citizen, which means uh, it doesn't really matter where she's buried, just as long as her work carries over and inspires new people. We really like to appreciate the fact that she came from you know our place. It can be a small country and you can make a lot of impact by one person. I have a personal story regarding Mother Teresa. When I was 11 months old, I fell very, very ill. I needed surgery and my parents were stressed out of their minds. A very kind lady gave mom a locket she had gotten from Mother Teresa and she said that the blessings associated with the locket would help me recover. So I stand before you hail hearty and handsome because of the grace of Mother Teresa and the kindness of one woman. So auntie, if you're watching this, thank you for standing by my family in very, very difficult times. And for the rest of you all watching this, please like, subscribe, follow me. I'll see you later.